we got a 10 inch, um, 11 and a quarter. Let me think about this. Doing some math, guys. 10 inch plus four. We're gonna go like 14 and a half. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're gonna go over something that does confuse a lot of people, although it's super simple once you've done a couple, and that is building a staircase. We've got this alcove right here. We're gonna build a simple straight staircase, and I'm gonna take you guys through that process, how we figure that out, because once you know the formulas, it is very easy. And my goal is to give you guys some pointers and tips that can just make it even easier. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right, so step one, you need to know how tall it is from the top of your finished floor to the bottom of your finished floor. So we're gonna start by checking right here where the stairs are actually gonna attach to the up top and we're sitting at 118 and three quarters. So the important thing though is not all floors are perfectly level. So what I like to do is we've got a laser set up. Okay, so we've got the 600G and I'm gonna come back here at this point and I'm just gonna take a quick measurement. We're sitting at five and 11 sixteenths to that laser. Now the reason that's important is because I just measured this distance to determine the math of my stair. But let's go ahead and come out here. I did a pre-check um, before the video just to double check where about the stairs are gonna be. Now this side, we're once again right at five and 11 sixteenths. But if I come over here against my wall, I am barely, I'm about five and five sixteenths. So that's the difference. I know it's crazy, but there's a difference in three eighths of an inch in this four foot section. What that means is I just have to remember that because the, if I build these stairs without taking in account for the difference in elevation, this first step and every subsequent step until the very top is gonna be kicked out of whack. So we need to remember when we get to building this stringer, we need to change the depth of this first tread so that it sits lower down here. We don't wanna raise this one up because it's uncomfortable to have a taller step. So with that being said, now we're gonna go do some math and I'm gonna show you guys what we do with those numbers. Once you know the height, you can start figuring out how to build your actual stringer. So let's do that. All right, so now that we have our dimension, we know that the height of our wall is 118 three quarters of an inch, okay? So what we need to determine is how do we cut a stringer so that the steps are level and everything fits into here? Well, we're gonna take the 118 and three quarters and I'm using the Construction Master Pro. It's kind of my go-to um, construction calculator, I love it. And I'm gonna divide that by a typical tread height, seven and a quarter. That's always our go-to, okay? Um, and I'm gonna come up with a, a weird number. It's not an even number, it's 16.37931. So since I know that's pretty close, um, we're gonna actually take this number and divide it by the 16 to get an actual whole number because we don't wanna have to have an odd number. So now we've got seven and seven sixteenths. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna draw you guys a really quick diagram of a stair. And this is gonna hopefully give you guys a little bit of background knowledge into some of the words that I'm talking about. We've got a stringer. This is what we're looking to cut. Here we've got treads that go here. These are what you step on. And we've got a riser that goes to the back of the tread, okay? What we just determined is that my riser height, this height right here is going to be seven and seven sixteenths. And when we multiply that times 16, we're gonna get the total height of 118 and three quarters. So now what we can do is to determine how far out is this gonna come? How, how long is my staircase? And to do that, what I'm going to do is typically I use a two by 12 for my treads. So because as you can see right here, we've got an overhang um, anywhere from an inch, inch and a half, it just depends on what I'm trying to do to squeeze my staircase. Um, I'm still gonna use a two by 12 and on this, I'm gonna make it because we don't have a lot of room, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna try to squeeze this in and we're gonna do a 10 inch. This dimension right here is gonna be 10 inches and we're gonna get, that's gonna give us an inch and a quarter overhang. So what I'm gonna do is remember we've got 16 steps. This last step is the actual top. So we're gonna subtract one from 16 and that means we're actually only gonna end up having 15 steps or treads on our stringer. So we're gonna do 15 times 10 inches, 
pretty simple in dimension. That's 150 inches. So now I know that my steps, maybe not the most perfect, are going to come out 150 inches, and it's going to go up and be 7 and 16 shy of hitting the top of my um, top of my landing. So with that information, what I can do now is I can actually cut a stringer. So let's go ahead and do that, and uh, we'll go to the next step. Okay, guys, real quick before we go into cutting stringers, because with the information that I just gave you, the, the tread height or the tread width, the riser height, we could go cut our stringers and do it just like most people do it. But I've tried to get as precise and accurate and to make it as easy as possible. So I'm gonna nerd out for just a couple more minutes on using math to get the best stringer possible. If you're not interested in that, just go ahead, swipe a couple minutes ahead till we start cutting stringers. But if you're with me, let's go into a little bit more math. What we're gonna do is we're, we've got a perfect right angle triangle. If everything is level and plumb, we know that this dimension is my run, this is my rise, and it has a diagonal dimension mathematically that we can use, and you're gonna see why, right? What we've got is 118 three quarter rise, and now this 150 is to here, we've gotta continue out 10 more inches to this point so that we can continue this, we've got 160 inch run. What that's gonna give me is 199 and a quarter. That is this dimension from point to point. Now, why is that important? That is important because when I go to cut these stairs and when I start taking my uh, square with some stair gauges and sliding it up and down my stringer, error can be introduced. So this is gonna help me reduce error and make sure that this stringer is the exact size. Now I can take this one step further and I do. Let's take this little cross section right here, okay? We've got a stair, we know this is seven, seven sixteenths, this is 10 inches. I wanna know this dimension right here. It's the exact same angle that we have in the overall stair. So. Oops, I must have done something. One second. 118 inch, three quarter, rise, 160 inch run. It's 36.58 degrees. So what that's gonna tell me is that if I do this exact same rise run, it'll give me this diagonal and I can measure from point to point, ensuring that as I lay out my stairs, I hit every point and I get a, a reset point to make sure that my treads don't shift up and down the line, which is very possible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do seven, seven sixteenths rise, 10 inch run, 12 and seven sixteenths. Okay, that is gonna give me the point here to here. So is it kind of nerdy? Is it a little bit extra? Probably, but to me, when you know this math, when you do it enough, it comes second nature, you can do it very quickly and it makes the stair come out perfect every time. So let's go ahead and now go to uh, cutting these stringers and we'll adapt this into the stringer cutting. So hopefully all this makes sense and you can apply it on your next set of stairs. Okay, so here we have our four stringers that we're gonna be using. What we wanna do is we're gonna line these all up, set them up as a one piece unit because this is another pro tip. If you cut all your stringers at the same time, they will be exactly the same. If you have to make all the templates and come through and cut all of your stringers, they can get different or they can come out differently uh, just through user error. So we're gonna crown these, make sure that they're all going the same way. Which way you got? Crown is pointing this way. Yeah, okay. Yep, just like this. So now what we've got is we've got crown up. That's important because this is a structural type piece of lumber that people are gonna be walking up and down on. So you want it to be as strong as possible. If you crown your lumber in the manner that the forces are gonna be applied, it'll be stronger, hopefully. That's the goal anyway. All right, Greg, let's get them lined up. Pretty close. All right, what do you got? Pretty good? Okay, so now in order to cut through four two by twelves, you gotta have a really big saw. I realize a lot of you might not have that. 
So you can do the same thing with a regular circular saw. It just might mean that as you make your cuts, you'll have to pull the top one off and then you'll be left with a line that the saw already made when it did the first cut that you can then cut again. So if that makes sense, uh, it's a little bit more cumbersome, but it will at least give you an exact location to keep your cuts going instead of having to remark it, um, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So here we've got a standard framing square. Uh, this is actually um, Mark Martinez. He blessed me with this little flex, but he even put my logo on there. That's pretty cool. Uh, Mark's a good friend. So we know that our stringer is going to get a notch that is 7 and 7 sixteenths by 10 inches. That is the little triangle that we're going to cut out that's going to give us all of our stair stringer points. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a stair gauge and we're going to, actually what I really like to do is use something very straight. Let's see. Yes, a nice piece of plywood is better than a rounded off two by 12. And what I'm doing is I'm going to get this square laid out so that when it goes on the material, I'm at seven and a quarter, or sorry, seven and seven sixteenths, and 10 inches. So we're gonna get it kind of close and actually I'm gonna do it on the inside. For me, it's a little bit easier. So we're gonna line up on the inside marks. Seven and seven sixteenths, 10 inches right there. I like it. So now what we've got is wherever I put this to start my stairs, if I make a mark, on the inside, we've got a stringer with a stair notch cut out for a tread and a riser. And if we put a bunch of them together, we're gonna get a stair set, right? Now, that math we showed you guys, and those of you that didn't pay attention because you thought it maybe was too nerdy, um, this is where what we talked about is gonna come in handy. On this picture here, we're gonna set up we know our stringer length in total is 199 and a quarter. So Greg, if I could get you, we're gonna come in because these ends are a little bit, um, just a little bit crappy. So let's start down here. Let's cut some of this garbage out. Okay, you're gonna hold me right there. This right here is gonna simulate the top of our landing, right? This is the top and this is our first tread. And from this point, we're gonna go 199 and a quarter. Now what this is doing is, is giving me checkpoints because if I just start laying out that square, putting little triangles on this and I start running it down, I can very easily um, bring error into this system. So what I like to do is use this number that we came up with, 12 and 7 sixteenths, and we're gonna mark from the top to the bottom and give myself every point where every spot is so that when I bring this square, I can line it up perfectly and I never get error introduced just because I'm human and I don't line it up perfectly where it's supposed to be. So hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna do this. Greg, 12 and 7 sixteenths is my dimension. So first one, 12 and 7 sixteenths, which you can see we're lined up for right there. Next one, 24, 7 eighths. Next one, 37, 15, or 5 sixteenths. 49, 3 quarters. And this may seem, oh, dude, that's, that's way too much work. It's not worth it. Well, I'm only building this step once. My client, he's going to use it for the rest of his time here. So we want it as good as possible. It really doesn't take a whole lot extra. And we get to the end, it should be 99 and a quarter. Let's see, 86, 9 sixteenths, and 199. So I'm not really sure, that is, that is what's called um, accumulation of errors in the fractional, fraction versus decimal point. So um, when I'm using this in 
seven sixteenths, three eighths, you know, whatever that, this is where the imperial system is a little bit weak. I, I will give the metric people that. Um, it's gonna round to the nearest fraction. So I do believe that dim the dimension that I wanted was actually just ever so slightly bigger than seven sixteenths, which is why when we use seven sixteenths, we came a, a quarter shy. That's gonna, that's gonna be okay. And uh, I promise you that. So I'm not too worried. Now that we have all these tick marks, what I can do is take my square, and you see I'm lined up right with that first tick mark. Now I can visually make sure that every time I come down here, see, okay, this is a perfect example. Because my material is so rounded over, I don't get really a good clear mark. Now if this mark was not here, I would be coming through here and I'd be like, oh, let's see, where do I line up? I'm just trying to eyeball it. Well, now I don't have to. I can know for sure that I'm lining up exactly with that mark that I laid out. See, once again, it just gives me a little bit more um, a safety net. It just allows me to be a little bit more precise. What in the world? I laid that one out wrong. No big deal. I'll use this one. I might have read the tape backwards. This is, this is actually a great... Uh, point that I'm making right now because we're all human we make errors and by using these uh, like checks and balances it helps me make sure that I'm staying on point because when something doesn't make sense I can question it uh, but I don't have to question it because when I went to this next one I was lined up perfectly I must have just read the wrong side of my tape measure and actually you guys might have already seen that in the video I'm not sure you might have already seen it Okay, sounds good. We've got all these um, little stair treads designated. Now what we can do is start getting them cut. Um, and that's gonna take the beam saw. We're gonna use the beam saw so that we can make as deep of a cut as possible and get through as much of this as possible. So let's get that set up. This is something that for the longest time when I was building stairs early on in my career that I would make this mistake all the time and hopefully by sharing this, you will not make this mistake. So if we're looking at our diagram, right now, when I put this stringer up against my landing, if I cut it exactly as I marked it, I'm gonna have a problem. And it, hopefully it will make sense right here. So this is the top of my landing as it stands, okay? This is my seven and seven sixteenths, this is my 10 inches. When I put a tread on here, you would think, okay, that's gonna be perfect. I'll have 10 inches plus an inch and a quarter overhang, but there's gonna be a riser. Another two by is gonna get put right here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna take away my inch and a quarter overhang, and it's gonna leave me with a, a quarter inch, I guess, underhang. It's not going to cover it. So what I have to do is I need to cut this back off an inch and a half because I don't actually have a riser here but I have them on all the other ones. So hopefully that makes sense here. And then when we go way down here to the bottom, this line right here, this is designating my floor. This is my floor. If I do the same thing here and I, I put a tread here, I now am seven and seven sixteenths plus inch and a half. That is not the way our math worked out. So we're also going to come up here at inch and a half and we're gonna cut this a little bit smaller so that when we put our tread here, the total dimension is seven and seven sixteenths. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you don't follow this, you're gonna put your stairs up and you're gonna be like, oh crap, something ain't right. And nine times out of 10, when I made a mistake in my stairs, it was because I either forgot to cut off the bottom or cut off the top. So hopefully that helps you guys. Okay. All right, so when, when doing this, we like to screw these together, that way they don't move on you. And it's important that whatever happens in the middle of this stringer is gonna get cut into perfection because we're gonna do them all at once. But we need to make sure that the top and the bottom are as perfect as possible because that's where it's gonna seat to the ground and up on the landing. So right here is where my top is gonna be. So this is where I'm gonna make sure that I'm flush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drive this large fastener in. <laughs> Okay, that's gonna hold that together. And then we're gonna go down here where my floor is. This is also the most important spot and make sure that it is as flush as possible. 
Okay, that's going to hold it all together, and uh, now we can go ahead and get all these cut out. All right, guys, this is the beam saw, 16, I think it's 5 16 blade. So not everybody's going to have one of these, but it's perfect for cutting four stringers at once. And um, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and this is going to this is going to take a minute, but let's fire this up. Okay, so now that we've got all those cuts, even the beam saw, you're not going to get through everything because you're dealing with a circular blade. It never comes to a tight point. So now we're just going to bust out a sawzall. I do like to use a nice, stiff, uh, like demo demon blade and also a new one so it's not bent because when you make these cuts, you obviously want them to be uh, nice and straight. So I kind of let the saw do the work. I try not to push it too much and uh, just keep it, keep it going straight up and down. Okay, and we're gonna hope that it's pretty good. The important thing though is that we're gonna be using an adhesive and um, if it's not a perfect if you end up cutting a little bit more material than you want out of there, it will be okay because the majority of all these cuts were done with the beam saw. We're just doing the last little bit of finish. Yeah, battery, dude. I knew that wasn't gonna last. Been yeah, crazy. that's the way it goes. Did you see that? Hear that power difference? Okay, so now we have four basically identical um, stairs. Now, another thing to remember is that let's say I messed up somewhere on one of these, it now is messed up on all of them. And sometimes if it's consistent, it is right if it's inconsistent. If you mess up on one stringer, but do the other three perfectly because you did them all individually, that is where the problem is gonna stick out. So um, the more you can bundle things together, it actually will help hide a mistake if you do make one. Something to remember. Now that we have this done, um, we can go ahead and check it, which is always a scary thing, by going up there and seeing how it fits into the staircase. So let's do that. So real quickly, before I bring my first stringer in to check, I'm gonna make a, a mark where the top of my stringer is supposed to be. I've got a seven and seven sixteenths plus the thickness of our tread, which is inch and a half. So we're gonna go eight and 15 sixteenths. I'm gonna make a mark. And now, Greg, why don't you bring that stringer in here and let's see how we line up and how it lays on the floor. It's always the moment of truth. You never know. Wait. It's where I want it. How does it hit the ground, Greg? Uh, perfect. Perfect? Is that all right? So the thing is, if we're good down there and if we're good up here, the only other thing we can do is we can take a level and make sure that our treads are running level. So we'll do that real quick, even though it doesn't matter. We've already cut these. But something that we're going to do on this job, guys, is let's say I put this stringer up here and then I go to put my wall covering on, I'm gonna have to cut around each of these stairs. I don't wanna do that, I'm lazy. I wanna do the least work possible while still having it look good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use all the dimensions that we learned on this staircase for the angle, and we're gonna cut another stringer that is a solid two by 12, and it's gonna fill in this area, and it's gonna give us something to trim to. Now, if you're doing drywall, and you guys maybe remember when we did a, a barn dominium last year, we did the same thing, only 
we dropped our secondary stringer so that the drywall could go behind these treads. We're not gonna do that here because we're using steel and that's just an area to get really dirty. So let's go ahead, Greg, check it for level there, man. Throw that, that stick on there. How close are we? Now my cut is gonna make a, a lot of Yeah, it, it, honestly, so two but things. It, it, the, beam, the beam saw is a thicker kerf, mm -hmm. so if you go all the way back where I cut with the, uh, the saw. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, if you look right there, we're. Yeah, right there. so if you go all the way into the back where my cut could be kind of crappy, that is very possible. I think we have a winner as a stringer. Yeah. Math doesn't lie. So now let's go ahead, let's cut our side stringers, and we'll get those put in first before we actually put in the stringer. But good thing, guys, we, uh, we cut a successful stringer. That is gonna work just fine for us. So this should be the board oops, that goes along the wall, but we're gonna put it up there and then we'll have to make a couple marks um, so we can cut off the excess. You'll see what I mean here pretty soon. Okay, so this piece should line up with our two and, this, well, two and 15 sixteenths. It's a mark I made based on some math and uh, Something like that, Greg, are we gonna be good? You pretty flush? Yeah. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a place to attach our string or two. Now all I'm gonna do is just make a trace. Greg, why don't you make a trace down there on that wall? Do you want it to mark three quarter or can I just mark it three quarter? Um, eh, it should be in line with the three quarter. But hey, wait a second. Do we want to take that off? It will cut it off. Yep. Just mark it and we'll take three quarters. All right. <coughs> awesome, dude. All right, let's go ahead and get this fastened where it goes, which we've made some marks so we know exactly where to put it. And let's see, that'll get all the way through. And this is what our first stringer is gonna attach to. Um, yeah, let me hit this one. Do you like it? Yep. And be good here, okay. All right, now bring a stringer over, Greg, and let's, uh, let's for a visual representation, we'll show how this is gonna go together, but we've got some work to do to the bottom of our stringers because we don't wanna just set them on the ground. We gotta give ourselves a little cleat, um, and you'll see that way, I think it's code thing, I'm not actually sure, but uh, it's good practice and things that people have taught me on the internet that I've incorporated because I think it's a good idea. So anyway, let's go ahead and put this up. What about there? That look pretty good. So now what we've got is when we run our steel here, we can put a piece of trim on top of this and it's going to be a lot cleaner. We won't have to cut around anything and our stair treads and risers will die right into this. Um, I think it looks good, Greg. I think we did it just how we wanted it. So let's go ahead and do our bottom detail and then we can put all the stringers in. Actually, we gotta do another one over here too, so. Okay, it's all you. It's 150 inches plus four foot. So it's 16.6, but I'm an inch, so it's right in, it's right in here. Okay. And we've got a 16 inch layout. All right, so remember guys, these uh, stringers are not all gonna be the exact same because this floor is not perfectly level. So once again, I'm gonna come out here with my laser and I've got basically a 16 inch spacing on these stringers. So at this point, this is our zero point. And the reason it's zero is because this is the lowest point and we're gonna cut off what we need to in order to make these all um, to be nice and level. So out here, I'm at five, 11, no, 13 sixteenths, right? Is that right? Yeah, 13 sixteenths. Here we're at, I would say 11 sixteenths. Here we're at 7 sixteenths, 
and up against the wall, we're at 5 16 So at least it's a consistent kind of uh, gradual slope. So what we'll do is I'll use these dimensions to cut the bottom of each of these stringers off so that when they set on the ground, they will all be, in fact, hopefully as level as possible. So now that we have the bottoms supposedly cut to the right elevation, Greg is making a little inch and a half by three and a half block. And we're gonna cut that out. And that is where we will put the cleat on the floor. So nice little simple scribe action here with the square, inch and a half by three and a half. Okay, let's cut those bad boys out. Okay, now I think we take our stringer, set it up next to it, and then we'll determine where we're gonna cut it. So mark down eight and 15 sixteenths from the top, from the, from the landing, no, straight down. And I'm gonna bring you a stringer that's gonna go right there. Okay. Oops. Yes, yes. You go wherever you want. Oh, this freaking thing is gonna barely sit on there. Okay. So where do we wanna take this to then? Hmm. I think I'm looking for a clean square cutoff somewhere. Um, and, hmm. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. And maybe that's not all that bad, but I don't want to go on top of that board there. What I kind of was shooting for was like a four and a half inch um, overhang. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna do that. And that's where we're gonna cut that sucker. Right there, square it off, yeah, okay. So that is what we're gonna have to cut out of the steel and then a piece of J channel will go on top of this and it will clean up this edge really nice. So um, let me just mark that. And I think, yeah, let's get a little bit bigger. Okay, that should be good to go. Um, believe it or not guys, this simple staircase is a little bit complicated because it's not exactly just going into a perfect little location. We've got all this other oddball stuff to deal with. Um, and I don't want to bore you guys too much, so I'm going to try to limit some of the details on getting some of this figured out because you're not going to always run into this exact issue. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff cut out. Okay, now that we have this ledger board on, we can put... Um, we can put our first stringer in here, right? Uh, Greg, give me a give me a measurement up top. Total width. Forty six. So, just as a reference, oh, yeah, sure. Forty six. And just curious, I doubt we're going to be perfect. Forty six and three eighths. So, I mean that's. Really not a surprise, but there will be some movement in this wall between these columns that we can play with. It's no big deal, it's easy. What I was trying to decide was, do we build the stringers, set them in here? I don't think so. I think we just do one at a time. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, before I put these stringers in, uh, because it's white wood on concrete, um, just being precautionary and taking some seal tape to wrap this bottom because that's what's gonna come in contact with the concrete. I don't think it's probably ever gonna be an issue, but in case the customer does some washing of the floors, stuff like that, it'll just keep the uh, moisture from getting into this wood. So it's not a bad idea. Greg is going ahead and getting our 
ledger board that's gonna go on the concrete also, and that's what's gonna lock in the bottom of our stairs, so he's gonna put some seal tape on that as well. Okay, before we drop our stringers in, the top of all these stringers are gonna be at eight and 15 sixteenths down, so I made a quick mark, and then I'm just gonna take my square, and I'm gonna give myself a nice scribe line so that it is consistent across this whole side. And then I also laid out right where they're going to land. So I gave myself a 16 inch on center spacing. So that's where that's gonna land. And there's not a lot of meat up here to attach these. So we'll probably had, have to add some additional framing, but we'll go ahead and throw these stringers in real quick and uh, see how we did. So I'll just line this up on my line. I don't have my gun. Where's that at? Oh, you got it. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you having that for me. You are the real one. So I like doing this little side stringer here because it really does add to the strength. Um, yeah, if I'm attaching to a wall, it's not gonna be too big of a deal, but it's just a nice way to tie everything together. And especially in our buildings, make this really easy to uh, trim out. Okay, so down there you should have a Mark Greg about. Okay, hold that sucker right there. Okay. Yeah, right there. Somewhere right there. All right, last one. Okay, right about there, hold that, Greg, so I can get in a little bit better position. Okay, now the ultimate test is, I guess, where's that level at, Greg? How do we, how do we do? So while Greg's getting the level, this is the the ledger that he put his uh, seal tape on. And the goal for this is to slide right underneath this guy. Now there's a really good chance that this concrete is kind of so jacked up that um, it's not gonna be perfect. Uh, but it looks pretty darn close. This one's on something right there. Um, but then we can tap con this down to the concrete and uh, and then these stairs can't kind of move out, but I guess that's kind of one of those things that we want to be good. Oh, thank you. Nice. So that's good right there. If if we wouldn't have done those cuts on the bottom of each one of these, this would would not have been very level. And I'm pretty happy with that. So that is the stringers. We're gonna go do some. Attachments, we'll go ahead and get this bottom tap con to get everything squared away, and then it will be on to stringers and treads. The problem is, I forgot the stringers. So I'm gonna decide whether or not I'm gonna run and get them right now, or if we're gonna come back another day and do it. But you guys will know because our, our clothes might change or not, so I don't know. What should we do? I don't know, we're gonna find out. We're gonna go, we're gonna go talk about it at lunch. Yeah, okay. Okay, is that right? Yeah. What I need to make sure as I'm going ahead and uh, installing these risers, which we went ahead and made the decision to run to town, went to the local lumber yard. Now, these are some of the nicest looking two by eights Greg and I have seen in a while, but they better be because I paid $138 for four two by eight sixteens. And just for, you know, just for a laugh, I was like, hey, what, what would I have paid if I would have went to Menards, which is where we get a lot of our lumber. And it's not that bad. That is one two by eight sixteen. So you could do the math. That's about $55. So I paid about three times the money, but hey, it's just down the road and we help support a local lumberyard business, which I'm not gonna complain about. So now we have our risers. Greg's getting them all cut and I'm gonna go ahead and start installing these. We're gonna be gluing and screwing, but what I wanna do is make sure that they're laid out properly. So down here at the bottom, I'm just doing my first riser and I'm putting my uh, 16 inch on center marks so that I can make sure that this bottom starts where it needs to be. And I haven't fastened my ledger board yet. 
because we're just going to make sure that everything is where we want it. And kind of get some stuff fastened. So I'm going to get my glue, get my screws, and we'll start putting this together. Honestly, guys, the hard work is done, in my opinion. If you've gotten this far, if you've been with me this long, this part is easy because we're just going to be screwing and gluing some treads and risers on. <clears throat> okay, we're going to be using some adhesive here. Same stuff we used on the floor. And I'm just going to go ahead and ooze some of it on each one of the back sides where this riser is going to go. And we're going to be using some GRK screws. I'm going to start out here at the outside, make sure we like it. We don't worry about that because that'll actually dry and we can just flick it right out of here. And then I've got my layout that I'm going to hit. So first things first, get up this side done. And then we're just looking to line up this mark. Okay. Now, once we get this, uh, this first riser done, we've got it attached at the top. We've got it right where we want it at the bottom. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and put this ledger into the concrete and we're going to do that so that as I start working up on this and putting my weight on it I don't want it to like want to flex out I want it to stay put right where I I, uh, I have it so let's go ahead and put a couple tap cons in get it fastened and then it's not going anywhere okay hey first time on site guys for a little uh, tool demo this is a Milwaukee new SDS uh, D handle it's kind of a beast man but it uh, looks pretty sweet but I guess if it doesn't work good, we don't really care. Uh, maybe in the future we'll do a video of this thing, but for now, I just wanna use it on site before I give you guys my opinion. Ooh, it's got a little bit of a vacuum pop, so it's gonna clean that filter every time. That's kinda nice. Okay, so now, now that this is here, this stairs are not gonna come out. So now we can work our way up this thing. But actually, Michael, the camera guy was like, hey, why is this bottom stair so much smaller than the rest of these stairs? And you remember when we started this process, I said, if you don't do a little bit of cutting off at the bottom and at the top, you're gonna have a problem. And now it's very evident. So when I go ahead and put this first that's backwards, this first riser on, right? And then I take a tread, set my first tread on here. This dimension, this is my seven and seven sixteenths, okay? Now, even though it looked like the second step up was actually bigger, oh, that's gonna come out here. Because we are adding a tread, but there's no tread going here, by the time we come up to the second one, we're also gonna be at our seven, seven sixteenths. In essence, making sure that this first tread is seven, seven sixteenths, seven, seven sixteenths, a consistent um, step up. If we wouldn't have adjusted that bottom of that first stringer so that it was shorter, then we would have that problem now where this first step would actually be an inch and a half tall. And when we get to the top, it's the exact same thing, only we're not putting a riser at the top, so we had to shorten the back side of it. So just, I'm telling you guys, this is a mistake I've made a million times. And if I can beat anything into your brains, that when you're building your stairs, make sure you adjust the top and bottom so that when it's all done, your finished stairs are the correct dimension. So anyway, enough with that. Um, let's go ahead and start putting this all together. Notice I did keep this wood off the ground. I gave myself about an eighth inch space just so I didn't have to put tape on it, I guess. OK, 
Okay, since we're gonna, I guess, share tips and tricks, when you look at the side of your grain, what you want is you want it to be like a frowny face, okay? When you put your stair tread in, you want it to look like, or sorry, a smiley face. And the reason that is, in my opinion, is because this wood is gonna naturally want to straighten out these grains. These grains are gonna wanna straighten out, so it's gonna cup down. I would rather have it cup down on my stair than to cup up and create like a little, uh, an, an awkward spot to walk on. So that's my opinion. I don't know if everybody shares that opinion. I guess let me know down below in the comments. But I always make sure that the end grain of my stair treads are smiling at me. Now, what I'm going to do also is I'm gonna hit right in these middles. But also while I have the opportunity, this is why I do this kind of one at a time, I'm gonna come in down here and I'm gonna to screw together so that right here is nice and strong. Mainly just until the glue sets. It really doesn't probably matter in the long run because the glue is gonna be strong. But I think this makes for an even stronger stair. Yeah, that way this, oh, it's gonna be nice and solid. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is just make sure, so we're running it like two and an eight. I'm just gonna put a little mark just so I can be consistent. See, so this is the fun part. This is the easy part. Really not much you can mess up. We're just lining everything up. And uh, I do recommend, and I probably will, is I'll go up here somewhere and uh, put another riser in, make sure that my spacing is correct, just so there's not any weird stuff going on in the middle um, before I get too far, and then I can't really adjust it. So this is just more or less to make sure that these guys are still right where I want them. But they look, they look pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna do, we're gonna get this all attached. We're gonna get this pulled over a little more. This is a little bit wide right through here, and I'm sure it's all in my wall. There. That'll work. Okay, so now I feel pretty good about just running this all up. And, well, believe it or not, guys, this is going to be a lot of monotony. I'm going to be putting a riser in. I'm going to glue a stringer in. I'm going to put some back screws in and we're just gonna work our way all the way to the top. Notice that we did leave a little bit of an overhang here. Once again, we'll just chunk that stuff out later and just to give it a nice little return, but um, let's just get this thing done. Let's get these treads done so we can see how it all turns out and we'll go to a little bit of time lapse for you guys. Okay guys, real quick, I just wanna let you know, I will be putting a hanger on each of these stringers. I just don't have them. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll set a hanger in here, nail it off to the face of the uh, mezzanine here, and that'll be nice and strong. Even though the way this is mounted on these outside stringers, it's not going anywhere, we're gonna do it for additional strength, obviously. So don't worry about that. We will do it before we finish this project. All right, guys, that is the, uh, that's the staircase, man. I mean, this is actually a simple staircase. Had a little bit of complications just because of what we were doing, uh, but there you go. We got a little bit of 
a little bit of goo glue there that we'll have to clean up. But man, look at this nice, solid set. This is only gonna get better once we get this glue set up, but it's all glued, screwed, two by 12 material on the stringers. And uh, I hope this was something that you guys could learn something about maybe making your next set of steps easy. Uh, if so, if there was something that I definitely didn't touch on, because uh, I, I always try to, you know, how complicated do I make it? How deep do we go? Let me know down below in the comments if you guys still have questions about stairs. We're always doing these in our projects and I can always implement into a future video. So if you guys enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up. I appreciate it. Um, and like always, you know, if I don't ask and you don't think about it, you're not going to do it. Hit that subscribe button, guys, if you want to stick around, see more content about building. we got a lot coming down the pipeline, and I hope you guys stick around. But with that, we're going to go ahead. We're going to clean up because that's the job for today. Next thing we will do here is wrap all of this wood. We'll get it all finished with metal, and this thing is going to look pretty sweet. So for that alone, make sure you guys stick around. But I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, clean up. We'll see you guys on the next video.